Trevor and Dave. We affirm, as an observation, NBER 22 explains, under right to work laws, workers cannot be legally required to pay union dues, reducing unions by 13%. Unions are key for three distinct reasons. Contention one is income inequality. Subpoint A is wages. Because bargaining with employees allows unions to increase wages, Santano 22 writes is that workers represented by unions can earn 10.2% higher wages than their non-union peers. However, Venevan 20 writes is that right to work provides the opportunity for employees to pursue their interests against those of workers, resulting in less bargaining leverage to raise wages resulting in higher inequalities. Subpoint B is safety. By making complaints to OSHA, SSN 18 writes that unions promote workplace safety. The threat <coughs> brought employers to improve workers' safety. However, SSN explains that by weakening unions, right to work legislation has increased the rate of occupational fat fatality by 14%. By pushing workers out of the job, Jensen 23 reports is that workplace injuries increase economic in in income inequality. Thus, EPI 21 concludes that deunionization explains a third of the growth of the wage gap. Crucially, because inequality reduces the level of demand in the economy, Shiparu 22 writes is that when those at the bottom are at a greater risk for not living up to the potential, the economy pays a price. Thus, Eisenberg 15 concludes is that eight of the 10 worst states in terms of quality of life are right to work, while eight of the best, uh, eight of the 10 best are non right to work. Contention to is healthcare. Another Pandemic is imminent. Im im as Heyman 22 writes, that climate change, deforestation, and urbanization are increasing the likelihood of another pandemic. However, Dean 22 writes that neither governmental regulations nor market force are sufficient to protect workers. Unions are key for two reasons. First is legislation. Green 20 writes that unions lobby for legislation that puts workers first. During pandemic, unions lobbied legislation that included pieces such as pay paycheck protection programs and new employment compensation programs. Crucially, LeBrock 20 notes is that these regulations, these legislations provide over $140 billion in appropriations to support the United States healthcare system and ensure all testing and vaccines are COVID to be covered and no cost. Second is coverage. Because unionized workers bargain for health benefits, Medin Crawlis 20 reports is that union workers are more likely to be covered by health insurance compared to non-union workers. If right to work laws are passed in every state, Gold 11 notes is that two million fewer workers would be covered. Access to health insurance is key, as Galvani 22 writes, is that inequalities in healthcare access have exacerbated case fatalities rates in the United States. A fast and effective response to pandemics is key, as Yam 16 writes that there's a point at which pathogens become so aggressive that the entire host population dies. Civil may be approaching such a critical threshold. Contention three is automation. Because automation destroys more jobs than it creates, while not giving workers enough time to train for new jobs, Olson 22 finds that when workers are displaced by automation, they experience long periods of unemployment and fall into cons uh, consumption, making automation inefficient and excessive. Thus, Woods 22 finds that automation is not a win-lose win situation, but rather a lose-lose situation. Crucially, unions create better automation in two different ways. First is notifications. Unions ensure workers are notified ahead of time when automa automation will be employed so they can adjust. 319 writes that union negotiations secure protection when employees bring in technologies. Those protections include access if jobs are created because automation advance notice before automated technologies are deployed and having workers remain as safety measures. Second is facilitating transactions. To ensure the workers transition smoothly to new jobs, unions play a vital role. As Pocket knows further, is that unions demand retraining of union members to improve their suitability that emerge from the union in introduction of technology and seek the reskilling of their members to operate in new parts and new technology uh, as a part of their roles. Unfortunately, due to RTW laws, unions are unable to save workers from the damaging effect of automation. As Kuhn 20 uh, explains, is that unions buying to get ahead of the automation curve need to increase their membership. The more members a union has, the better better chance the union has to influence automation. Absent progress, Pocanos uh, concludes by 20, 30, 40 million workers will be displaced by automation. That was three seconds over.
construction of right to work state trips in the future for manufacturing in the U.S. Specifically, Austin 21 writes manufacturing is particularly exposed to unionization for two reasons. First, manufacturing has had historically high unionization. Second, high capital investment exposes employers to higher costs from unionized employees. Accordingly, right to work leads to a 28% increase in manufacturing. Empirically, NRFWC 22 finds from 2011 to 2021, the states that had right to work saw a manufacturing gain of 400,000 jobs. States that lacked right to work saw a decrease of 29,000. Manufacturing Western military might, as AVO7 explains, the industry's ability to supply defense establishment will depend on its ability to compete in commercial markets and maintain a domestic presence. The government must encourage investment in manufacturing, otherwise it would seriously compromise military preparedness. Readiness is key, as Spencer 2K confirms declines in readiness signal to the world that the U.S. is not prepared to defend its interests. Hostile nations will lash out, inevitably leading to U.S. involvement. Devastatingly, the African team concludes the next great power war would involve nuclear weapons. It could end civilization and vitamin miscalculation. Manufacturing also makes the economy resilient, as NAM 17 writes, for every dollar spent, another 181 is added to the economy, the highest multiplier of any sector. Contention 2 is innovation. Expert 23 plans U.S. long been a global leader in innovation and ranks number one in R&D venture alliances and capital. RTW is the cause for two reasons. First is funding. Win 22 explains, we're following right to work laws. Firms experience a significant reduction in risk, encouraging corporate innovation and reducing financial distress. Firms increase R&D by 25% following adoption. Thus, Win 22 concludes a comprehensive sample of over six decades to suggest adoption of RTW results in significantly greater patents. Second is entrepreneurship. Ohanian 11 finds startups have very low profit margins, increased unionization while disproportionately raised costs, which leads to high failure rates. Out of 8,802 unions, 21% were firms with less than 10 workers. Better 10 confirms returns to capital investment are impaired by unionization, so new startups are much lower in non-right-to-work states with entrepreneurial initiative cycles. The impact is twofold. First is economic growth. Evan 22 writes, 50% of U.S. GDP growth is attributed to innovation, and the rural one for this U.S. growth has a positive impact on growth in developing countries, explained by its role as a trading partner. A 1% increase in U.S. growth is correlated with a 1% increase in growth in other countries. That's key, as Majora 08 quantifies, a 1% decline in developing country growth traps an additional 20 million people in poverty. Second is the environment. Chandaria 21 explains, today's technology has the potential to reduce global emissions by two-thirds. There's momentum building for solutions. U.S. investors are emphasizing sustainable innovation. Action at home ripples globally as board off went further, the innovative clean energy sector may be the greatest contribution to combat climate change. U.S. climate leadership brings down the cost of clean tech for the rest of the world to decarbonize. If progress stalls Spectre 19 warns by 2050, ICE expanded, brutal jobs fill the Amazon, and the planet plunges into a feedback loop of ever hotter failure conditions. Armed conflicts over resources culminating in nuclear war are likely. The result is the end of civilization. Contention 3 is resource. Overbearing organized labor keeps jobs abroad. MG23 explains, by the 90s, industries were tired of oppressive tactics used by unions when it became possible to work from remote locations, companies queued up to outsource. NRWC 21 explains, since 2010, U.S. companies transport more than 700,000 jobs uh, to our shores. A gain remotely near that would have been impossible without right to work states, responsible for 69% of reshoring, more than three times as many jobs per capita as in states that lack such law. Reshoring is key, as Mojo 22 confirms, reshoring is already underway with the rate of return rising. The trade war, Russia's invasion, and the risk of decoupling with China have dramatically increased vulnerability of supply chains. The U.S. needs to revive its industrial base and with it economic resilience and growth. Global stability is at stake as Oppenheimer 21 explains lower growth will make the liberal order difficult to resuscitate. Domestic politics will become dysfunctional. Changes in power heighten the potential for preemptive war. Multipolar states are on edge and act on fear. The transition is hazardous as all three of powers doubt the safety of a multipolar nuclear armed world. The clearest evidence for a distribution of power away from America is GDP. It's from the economy that states extract and apply power and forbid a stress test. Thus, we engage. <coughs> Can I get the first question? On your first argument about innovation, your first piece of evidence is guest expert, expert evidence from 2023. Where's the methodology in this card? Or is there any methodology in the card? Sure, so I can pull up the card and walk you through the methodology. Sure, like, like, like what does a card cite to come with a 4.2%? It's a guest as expert on a political blog that is being asserted. Like what, what piece of like methodology does the author use? Sure, uh, I don't know the specific methodology of that. It doesn't use any. Well, okay, it determines it through empirical analysis and it's citing yes, other using four, it, The journal it uses was four years ago, so sure it's written in 2023, but it's also done. Like the sure, methodology. so the innovation is still higher. No, in 20, like four years ago. We can agree that, it, okay, it's innovation it's higher than four years ago. Four okay, years no, sure. So on your safety argument, how do unions increase safety by making complaints to OSHA? Is that the argument? Yes. Okay, okay. why is a union critical to make a complaint to OSHA? Uh, we tell you that unions allow uh, unionization to happen where uh, like people uh, use their bargaining power against these uh, areas where they can so, do these uh, complaints. Well, specifically, I'm making a complaint to OSHA. I can do that tomorrow for my employer. Why is the union? Because when people are collective in their bargaining and when they talk to the people directly, that's what causes the so change to happen. You that's just why said it was a complaint to OSHA, that not Yes, that, that's what I'm saying. When they come collective together, there's more complaints that causes OSHA to look and recognize it. Can I get a question? Please? Sure. Sorry. 
Let's go to your argument about reshoring. Your impact is talking about a preemptive war, right? We've seen reshoring happen, and we've seen offshoring happen. Why have we not seen a preemptive war? Sure, so on our reshoring argument, the idea is that eventually we need to be collecting this power and so it's a good thing. The reason we haven't seen the war is because rights work states exist. Okay, cool. Yeah. So going to like your healthcare argument, the legislation made COVID tests free. Like how did that solve for the pandemic? It, our argument isn't that it's solved for the pandemic. We will we will argue that the COVID pandemic is distinct from future pandemics because in the COVID pandemic, we weren't ready for it. So when the legislation was being passed during that time, it was to prevent the COVID pandemic from spreading further. But future pandemics will be solved okay. because the, well, let me finish. Because the United States will be, or because unions realize that it's a problem, and that's why they're pushing for legislation that will help prevent future pandemics. But can I have a quick follow up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, American unions can only solve for the pandemic within the US, correct? No, we would say that the major root causes for the pandemic, so we'll, we'll solve for in the United States, will prevent like all the effects. How? How? Because if the United States doesn't, if there's like vaccine policies and other things, it mitigates the impact of the Have pandemic. other countries followed our vaccine policies? Like no, no our, our argument isn't that we solve for every pandemic. It's mitigating so you only the pandemic. within the US. We're saying you solve hundreds of thousands of lives because the pandemic will cause a collapse. But That's our just argument. the US, right? Yes, because, okay, okay cool. You can have, a, or can I have a question? Yep. Let's go to innovation. Let's talk about climate innovation. Your argument is that United States small business climate innovation will solve global climate change. How is this in any way true? Sure, we argue we're seeing it now. Our Chandra 21 card is very specific on this. It says that it can solve two thirds of climate change. So maybe not completely, but certainly enough to reduce it past the extinction. Wait, 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 how? How? That's a, I'm asking you technology. How? Climate, or like solar panels, climate car carbon capture technology, okay. making industries more efficient, manufacturing more efficient. All of those things that reduce carbon emissions okay. can help us limit climate change. Manufacturing argument. First off, they say that right the work loss increase in manufacturing by 28%, but we say that it's already getting better right now. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics 22 finds that manufacturing output has continued to grow steadily through the second quarter of 2022. It was 3.5% above the last quarter, not affected by the pandemic, which means that manufacturing overall is not an issue. In fact, there's a surplus of workers right now, which means their arguments of creating jobs don't matter. Second, Unions are also going to harm manufacturing. Sherco 9 finds that unionizing raising wages, uh, wait, sorry, uh, wait, sorry, wait, scratch that. Wait, yeah, yeah, scratch, scratch that argument. Wait, yeah, yeah, get, get something, wait, that's the wrong second. 
Now, let's catch all that. Go to the argument. Uh, first off, manufacturers in a recession right now. Rent can't solve. Chem 43 finds that U.S. manufacturers entered a recession in the fourth quarter of 2022, part of a global downturn and in industrial output, in which increased cost measures and have eased in, uh, put demand for goods have fallen. Second, the manufacturing sector is weak and unreliable, which means recovery doesn't matter anyways. Well, under 22 finds that downturns on manufacturing has historically been more severe than the uh, other industry, in, industries manufacturing historically suffered worse. Third, unions boost worker prosperity. McGee 20 finds that America's new industrial policy needs, needs unions. 80% of workers in war production, including manufacturing, were covered by union contracts, which means workers in manufacturing rely on unions. It can't happen without it. Finally, unions are also key to increasing manufacturing productivity. Medford 86 finds that in plants, unionization's effect on productivity is positive. Unionization increases the capital labor ratio and improves management performance that reflects improved labor quality. Then, other arguments on military readiness, all their arguments are that right now the world is posturing that we need to have our manufacturing industry ready. But one, the COVID pandemic really decreased manufacturing, and also our uniqueness that manufacturing always goes down means that it should have triggered in every single scenario where the U.S. should have been attacked or war should have happened when the U.S. manufacturing was down. But that never happened. Make them quantify why every single previous example of manufacturing going down never caused war to happen when the U.S. wasn't ready. Then, go to their second argument on innovation. Other argument on funding. First off, they've heard the evidence from 2023, postdates their evidence, and says that right to work laws uh, uh, increased, but innovation has decreased because overall, innovation, innovative technology has only increased in the price of doing this research, but innovative products have been made so much now that the actual return for companies are so low that companies don't want to invest anymore. But second, Bradley 11 finds that whenever unions increase productivity by giving workers better benefits and better training in the long term, that decreases turnover that is key for workers staying in these companies to conduct the innovation in the first place, which is why our evidence finds that innovation increased by 6.71% in states that have right to work laws. Third, the IRA and infrastructure bills also are all reasons why it, uh, innovation is going to happen no matter what. The U.S. government is already prioritizing, prioritizing this, which is why innovation is going to happen regardless of things like unions. Also, other countries are also going to increase innovation. They just read evidence that the U.S. is number one in R&D investment, but not innovative products, which is why, for example, the COVID vaccine was also outsourced to other countries that are going to do innovation regardless of the U.S. Finally, we also find that Silicon Valley is literally one of the leaders in the U.S. for innovation, but it's not led by right to work laws in that state, which is why, obviously, make them give examples of what companies or what states are doing this innovation. But then, on their impact on climate change, one, even if we produce climate change technology, we say there's no adoption. One, because countries are already locked into coal. For example, China, through its BRI, has dispersed so much coal that countries are reliant on it. And two, the climate cooperation has always failed because companies or countries always favor their economy, which is why they won't go to new expensive technology. Second, other countries also focus on climate change more than the U.S., such as Europe, which is another reason why they're going to make the innovation. Finally, go to their argument on reshoring. First off, Bowdy 20 finds that reshoring is actually terrible because of the ripple effect of the global economy. When we take these company, companies back to the U.S. from countries like China, these uh, countries like China have been so reliant on these companies and these jobs that it destroys their global economy and it ripples to the U.S. because of the interconnections of the economy. But second, Freeman 21 finds that if we decrease economic ties by reshoring jobs from countries like Beijing, that only allows countries like China to be freer economically to lash out and do things like start a trade war because they no longer rely on the U.S. and their jobs. Also, Paulson 17 finds that doing so would decrease cooperation because we're taking back U.S. jobs and the, uh, thus decreasing economic ties that can lead to cooperation. And also, labor's still cheaper in China because we, they don't have the minimum wage like we do. Um, you the two pieces of evidence on reshoring and the first yeah. piece of evidence on innovation. Yeah, yeah. so the first piece of evidence on
decided to jump in it. Mm. I'd go slow. Starting. Okay. Read. Uh, Nega. Agree there's going to impact manufacturing that kicks the link turn on second catch when innovation will also agree that IRA solves and the government intervenes so innovation always exists and that if we fail to cooperate with China so there is no turn on the link turn specifically there are just they're more innovative but there are less companies to begin with the turn formation so they don't actually increase innovation on net on reshoring they did not read a single piece of link defense in this argument if they make new cross applications in their summary speech we get new answers because we can't predict what cross applications they'll make at that point this debate whether reshoring is good or bad they say China is cheap labor that it undermines their global position in the economy there's no warrant why China is key to the global economy our evidence says that a one percent increase in US growth spills over to growth in other countries that was right on the innovation argument that the US is the biggest of growth, so preserving U.S. economic superiority is preferable. And all their arguments about economic decoupling, reshoring does not mean economic decoupling, but rather competition with China that forces China to invest in their own domestic industries. That also allows China to become more productive. The difference is that with reshoring, we avoid a, a, a supply chain dependence on China, which allows them to monopolize industry. Also, they haven't weighed any of these arguments. Our argument is specific about war and lowering the risk that China is able to um, uh, uh, change our supply chain to, to dominance, into, uh, supply chain reliance into dominance for them. And none of their arguments are weighed, so there's no unique benefit. And it, it, even if, it, like, we were, even, it, even if like wages decrease. That doesn't matter because again, U.S. economic growth spills over, and the impact is preventing war, which is far wider. They say it makes China more likely. No, because uh, the, the decreased cooperation on climate. They literally said China and the U.S. can't cooperate effectively. So obviously, there's no unique impact to cooperation. And if China is vulnerable economically, they're more likely, like, likely to cooperate with the U.S. because they're in a position of weakness. This is proven by the fact that we haven't seen a war now, and that reshoring is increasing. And yet, there haven't been the negative effects, but there haven't there have been the positive effects. Let's go to their case. At the top, right to work is materially irrelevant. Whitaker 22, for a state to pass right to work, voters must elect politicians predisposed to get anti-union preferences. Right to work laws dominate the South, and the South has historically had smaller union membership. Right to work really reflects preferences and will provide no substantive change to union membership. Presume negative references says do more harm than good, so nothing is negating. On free writing, SCARP 22 writes free writers is false. Unions specifically fight to represent all workers, whether they pay or not. Unions spend only a small percentage of money on directly representing workers. If unions believe they were harmed by having to represent non-members, they could easily leave it to damage. But short 15 fights commercial reduced give unions a monopoly. The few institutions pressure them to put their members' interests first, leading to higher costs for members and inflated salaries for officers. And non right to work Voluntary use require unions to earn worker support. This takes up the app, but not the neg. Post right to work unions are smaller, improving the business climate. They're also more efficient, meaning workers receive more benefits on that. The only losers that neg world are corrupt union officials. Group the contentions. Right to work laws lead to less, less union employment on that. Austin 21. Non right to work areas give unions the ability to raise wages above competitive equilibrium. Facing higher wages, firms hire less. Market clearing then leads to non unionized industries to absorb surplus. Conversely, Austin 21 finds this right to work reduces union density. Union exposed industries employ more. This has positive spillover effects on non union industries by reducing labor they must absorb. Career implications. A turns case. Less employees and unionized industries means less people with access to the benefits posited by the app, be it always on scope and severity, the app world may have stronger unions, but if there are less people with access to the union, this is net negative. See, for our stats, Austin's the most statistical analysis, uh, most recent statistical analysis studies, right to work versus non-right to work states on the border, which is the best way to control biases. On inequality, on wages, we outweigh. Smith 22, the best way to boost income is not exp expanding economic freedom. Wage increases that don't uh, come at the expense of other workers are driven by gains in productivity, which are caused by investment. Two, they don't account for cost of living. Shannon 14. Right to work states generally have a significant lower cost of living, lower than average wages, and non right to work states are offset. Once the cost of living is accounted for, right to work states have aver uh, average wages that are significantly higher than non right to work states. On worker safety, once safe workers are productive workers, companies will guarantee it regardless. Two, right to work has higher satisfaction, Mills 19, between 08 and 2017. An African right to work increased life satisfaction, especially among union workers. The increase in economic sentiment caused for nearly half the size of the increase due to having a college degree. On healthcare group, the links union actions are counterproductive. Burger 22, when a union strikes, nurses are faced with losing wages, patient outcomes decline significantly, losses of over 46 million, and that undermines quality. Also, people can access benefits, Bloomer and Kleiner 10. The rate of hospital mortality is 19.4% higher among those admitted during a strike. And two, unions lobby against universal health care programs. One, universal health coverage hopes were called into question thanks to opposition from labor unions. Unions fight tooth and nail just to keep whatever health policy they can to be better than their non-union peers. On pandemics, there's no extinction. Prefer rigorous studies and experts. Burnout and variation check. Four twenty-one extinction from natural causes but 0.1% per century is incompatible with the evidence. Also, pandemics are likely to start in developing countries where regulations are weak, not the U.S. On automation, one, cost by the employment turn. Two, every automate, every job automation destroys it will create one. Companies have incentives to train workers, so automated jobs are effective. Three, corruption directly applies. I'll show what 18 is significant portion of misappropriated funds were explicitly attended for employee training and for they hurt the most nimble workers shannon 14 um, unions negotiate exclusive representation for example a high performing worker is required to pay for a contract that rewards workers who are lower performers but have greater seniority so the workers who are most nimble and able to contribute to the economy are harmed by unions that's all okay you start with those yeah
So the U.S. is more interconnected. Helping the U.S. economy helps more than hurting the Chinese economy hurts the global economy. Like it's pretty simple. Wait, what? Yeah, like helping the U.S. economy helps okay. the globe more than hurting the Chinese economy harms the globe. So you're saying that the U.S. economy is like harmed less than China by this? No, the jobs are literally going to U.S. people. Like when you reshore, yeah, yeah, yeah they I go to U.S. That, I think that reshoring means that American people yeah, which is like, means, means higher U.S. economic growth, which spills over. Yeah, but doesn't the spillover also harm the U.S. and China's like economy getting worse? Like no, because. The U.S. has like they're not reliant on China. If they have like if they reshore, they're not reliant. That's the argument. But we're not only like interconnected with China. Like yeah, but if we have our own, if we're self-sustaining, it doesn't matter who we're reliant on. We just have the ability. Wait, so you're to saying that the reshoring of seven hundred thousand jobs in the U.S. is completely unreliant on the global economy? No, just just less reliant on China, which is what your turns are about. Like the foundry evidence, the but, no, no, evidence no, no. says nothing Here's about the thing. Like your your turn, <coughs> you're just saying you said that it's all about decoupling. It's not about decoupling. It's the fact that if you decrease jobs in other countries that they came to rely on, that spills over to the U.S., which means they read a line from it. That's that. Like that's the foundry. Yeah, just read a line. Like I said, yeah, I know. Like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was like quote. pretty badly paraphrased. No, it says the economic fortunes of countries are interconnected. Yeah. Agents. So like success in the U.S. spills over. Can I have a question now? We've been on the for sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, I guess on pandemics, can yeah. you stop an existential pandemic? Yeah. How? By making sure that people that are possibly infected aren't scared to go to healthcare because they can't afford it. What if? What about not unemployed people? What about people who like yeah, don't yeah. believe in masks? Our, our, our evidence, our evidence on our first like, of legislation says specifically that one of the things that the unions fought before in Congress was an unemployment protection plan, which means that people that are unemployed okay. can also get money Follow for up. testing and in, yeah. in non right to work states, why were there still COVID cases then? Because nobody was prepared for the pandemic. Our, our like, so, like, so seriously, like the difference is people being prepared, not like cultural ideology. No, no, no. Like, so people not here's our argument. Our right. argument is that nobody, not even the U.S. government or any government in the world, was prepared for the COVID-19 pandemic because it's the greatest that we've seen in like, like literally ever, right? So that's our argument. Our argument is that after COVID, there's an increased preparedness, and the unions are key to that preparedness because, for example, during COVID, literally the unions were key in lobbying for. Did you did you read evidence saying people. pandemics are likely to start in the U.S.? We read evidence that they're likely to start in general. We don't need to prove But if they don't start in the U.S., how can you stop the pandemic? Well, one, we're going to make an analysis that it does start in the U.S. And two, we also said that, like, again, we can win an impact of 300 million people like living in America, and that's still fine. Like, I don't think we need to go for it. Well, the thing is, it's not 300 million people in America. It's a fraction of those people who you benefit, well, you and it's a fraction of that. Like, I don't think you read a single piece of impact you even said people are going to live through the pandemic. Like. I don't, we, think we read, read I don't think you read enough evidence saying like pandemics start in the U.S. Like well, we don't need to win that, Ishan. Like, okay, that's fine. So okay, pandemics start saying, in the U.S. We can we can say everybody in America. That's good enough for us. Wait, what's the employment turn on C three on automation? What employment turn are you crossing? Austin and Lightly at the top. Austin Lightly at the top. All right, like <coughs> it's just like the stuff like just takes out the app and off the next stuff. No. Like after sure. No, like group the contention.
It's going to be a little bit. On the top, one, they tell you write some word files are in a minute and it won't do anything. But one, their last piece, their evidence is really horrible. The last sentence of it says that this might happen, but it isn't going to happen because there's always going to be other incentives for these companies to do other things. That's why their evidence right after tells you that even if free writing happens, write to work files are always going to stop unions from ever developing and growing further. This is important because one, this implicates to our, our argument. It, one, they don't read an implication to our third contention on automation. They just say it implicates to automation. How does it implicate to automation? There's no more than how it implicates to automation. But second, they say presume that even if you're, even if there's marginal offense on automation, you're not presuming that because we're saying that automation won't take over every single thing. But then they don't read any presumption words, so you're not probably voting on it. But then let's go to their turns. Both of their option turns are horrible. Two responses. One, they've conceded on our third contention that automation is going to take over every single industry, which is a fundamental prerequisite to any employment term because if every single industry is taken over by automation, then there's no employment in the first place. Our argument acts as a fundamental non-unique to the turn in, turns, in, which I'll get to later. But secondly, even if Austin true, their evidence is from 2021, prefer our evidence, which tells you that even if there's less unions and even if there's less uh, there's less solvency in, our, in their world, if the automation completely takes over, then there's no way that there's any solvency in the on, on automation, the round is really over here. They say classify the employment term. If they aren't winning the employment term in the first place, they're not winning argument. Second, they said every single job automation destroys will create one. No, it doesn't. Even if automation, is, even if automation in the short term creates small amounts of job growth in the long term, automation will completely kill every single job because there's not going to be there's not going to be incentive. But even then, we'd say this also applies to their case because they'll pay lower wages. That the automation uh, when automation takes over, they'll pay lower wages, which will harm more people. Then on corruption, they tell you corruption directly applies. They read one sentence part of this evidence. And two, what Tuva finds is that Tuva finds that postdates their Ochava evidence finds is that there's recent le le legislations passed that there's been uh, that there's been less embezzlement in the area. But second, what their Ochava evidence finds is that even if there is corruption in the squo, right now we're solving back for it because these companies are uh, because uh, there's been passed by the legislation. Then they tell you that it hurts the most nimble workers. This literal is a one sentence piece of blip. And second of all, they consider that it doesn't matter if AI is increasing because AI is, the, because AI is gonna take over and <coughs> extend AI. Well, we tell you that artificial, and artificial intelligence will take over no matter what. The only way to solve is by unions. Because unions are because unions are really strong and they can lobby against AI development and because they can directly tell the people that, that, that AI will be shifted into it, which is really important because when they tell the workers there's more readiness and so there's less amount of impact of job loss. They've conceded that AI, uh, that our argument doesn't rely on AI having to, AI completely taking over. They just concede the fact that AI matters. This independently outweighs their contention three reasons. One, if AI takes over all working positions, and that means that their argument on offshoring doesn't matter because countries are always gonna have, because countries are not gonna have enough worker incentive in the first place on offshoring. On offshoring, they've conceded a lot of things. One, they can see that China's minimum wage is always going to be lower than America's minimum wage, which means that people are always going to still offshore to China because they will always have incentive to. Two, they can see that China turned coal, which tells you that China will lash out when they when you remove uh, when you remove people from the area, which will cause massive amounts of war. <coughs> every single one of them. 
you send uh, me the bad one? Yeah, yeah. I might have said the name wrong, but. <laughs> Oh, it's cat. It's not that. Yeah, sorry. Just like send it. It's done. Also, John, this is like fun if you don't mind sharing this. Sure, it's not. Starting on the staircase, then going to our case. Everyone good? Okay. 
they fundamentally misunderstand our overview or Whitaker 22 cards that the states that pass right to work laws are already predisposed against unions. They already elect legislatures that already have anti union laws. This makes right to work laws fundamentally non unique. If it's not right to work laws to harm unions, it'd be a million other laws they would pass. They want to harm unions. It's not right to work laws to harm harms. It's these other laws and it's the legislatures that are anti union. This means you presume that because there's no actual harm to right to work laws specifically and because it's fundamentally dropped, you should uh, extend it. They say we don't give a warrant for presumption. The warrant's right there. The resolution says do more harm. It's not right to work laws doing the harm. It's these legislatures doing the harm. Right to work laws are fundamentally just part of that as a function of it because it's inevitable. Then, uh, on our like the corruption argument, our sure card is the best argument on this question. It says it provides an incentive for unions to improve better. When unions have a monopoly on dues, they don't actually provide better benefits because they collect the dues no matter if they're effective or not. Our argument says that when you increase rights or when you pass rights to work laws, they have an incentive because otherwise people will take their dues elsewhere. This makes it work like you have more efficient unions. Even if overall unionization rates decline, the quality of these unions increase and the benefits associated with them increase. This turns our automation argument. They say like a card about like lowering corruption. This is not like about official corruption with indictments. It's about corruption where the unions don't just get anything done. It's like inefficiency. We see that we make the unions more efficient because we're trying to push, uh, like an incentive for them to get better. This turns automation. Then on their like actual automation argument, first they've dropped the companies will always send them incentive to train workers to get better because you need jobs along with all automation such as safety oversight and regulation of those things. So they always have incentive to train these workers in the first place. You don't need unions for that. Then uh, they've dropped the jo like auto. Uh, yeah. Okay. Then on like the weighing debate, our impact is sooner. There are like AI takeover happens by 2040 when this trade war with China and these supply chain reasons that are happening now, the war will happen before AI ever have a chance to take over. So therefore we still access their impact. Then also the AI takeover doesn't uh, like matter if we reshore companies to the US and the companies are still in the US, we still have dominance over China, which means we can still solve our argument even if AI does take over. Then on like our case proper, first, extend the argument. It says that right to work laws are specifically good because it attracts foreign industries back to the US and we end up reshoring jobs. It leads to a 69% increase in reshoring, which would not have been possible without right to work laws. Extend the impact from Oppenheimer 21 to this change in power, heightening the potential for preemptive war, and then we need a, a like lower growth is bad. Uh, Moser 22 explains why reshoring is specifically key because China's uh, like dominance over our manufacturing industry and other supply and the supply chain industry leads to them re increasing likelihood of lashing out and going to war. They only give two responses. First is on the minimum wage argument. One, this was really glibby, but two, the conditions are better. U.S. companies want to work in the U.S. and they want to come back to the U.S. The problem is that they don't want to when unions are strong and when unions feel like they block it. Right to work laws are specifically the tiebreaker when countries are choosing whether to be in the U.S. or China. And when you pass right to work laws, the union or the they reshore the U.S. You should prefer us on this because you have a 69% increase in reshoring. The minimum minimum wage is clearly not in effect. Then they've also dropped that China will cave. Even if we harm their economy, China won't lead out into this big trade war because China will cave. Also, there's no impact to this trade war because if we have like domestic manufacturing, we can supply for both the globe and for uh, like, the, like our domestic industry. When we reshore manufacturing in the US, it doesn't matter if China costs up production because we're no longer like relying on them. Then we have weight. First, we're existential. We lead our supply chain war. Second, productivity links into the fourth. Third, we have weight on scope because we go to the whole globe. And then fourth, we affect their conditions because we lead an increase of productivity globally, which increases the fourth, even if you don't buy the war. Exactly, do companies care about better conditions if they're not the ones that are like producing the products or like manufacturing? PR matters. Like it's not like having like, like exploited labor is very why, nice. Why does Nike still use like child labor? Yeah. Sure. I mean that's one thing, but it's not like all of it's child labor. It's, it's also not specific like conditions what? just for the workers, it's like business. Okay, PR matters. matters. You, have, already you, have, you have an argument saying they would prefer China. We have an argument saying they would prefer the US. Our evidence says that right to work laws led to 69% of companies reshoring. They're coming back because of right to work. Like, we have evidence on the question. You have a half a sentence, like analytic. Well, it's, it's, here's oh. the thing, right? Using your competing like interests, it's just generally true that the U.S. has a minimum wage, whereas China has lower costs. I mean, right. There are just there's better conditions. Like, 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 why do companies care about better conditions? So my question: Investors are more willing to invest don't. in the U.S. They have more faith in like the yeah. model. Of access the company. to capital is easier in the U.S. to like look I mean, like, for warrants. Other like domestic like how is it easier to access capital in the U.S. Okay, but, capital but, capital okay, so okay, so none of this matters if we prove that 69 percent of reshoring is occurring because of right to work laws. So you don't like maybe maybe line. some companies like, maybe some companies say you don't a bright line for how many companies need to come back for us to meet this. Our evidence says it's enough. Like, so it's already enough. It's already enough. If yeah, right to work laws are doing good. It's enough. Wait, yeah. so 69% so of jobs coming back is the bright line to maintain the global liberal order? Sure. Okay. Like, you, need to, you would need to contest the logic of that. I mean, sure. you yeah, have yeah, a question. All right. Um, 
So how do unions help with like the automation, pending automation? Do they like lobby like prevent automation from taking no, over? No, so there's, there's two things. First is no, no, oh, sorry, no, no timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. First is notification. Do you want to explain? Sure. That? The first link that we have that is to this notification, which is that even if automation is what can happen, the uh, unions ensure that companies have to notify the workers before time so that they can't just like lose their job in a second to automation and have to do that. Can I just explain both the links? Yeah, yeah, then I'll ask question on the first. Yeah, and then the second link that we read is that even with this, even if there is like an increase in it, the unions have, because of laws that have been passed, unions have to guarantee jobs to workers even if AI is taking over, which you consider AI. Okay, so for the notifications argument, if AI will take over all jobs, like let's say they're notified. If I'm a worker, I know my job's gonna get automated, but if all the jobs are gonna be automated, where do I find it? Like, what, what's the question? Where do I, like, I'm a worker. No, that, that's, that's, I'm, why, that's why I'm our second notified. link works in tangent with our yeah. first link. So like they're not independent of each other? No, no, no our second link works in tangent. The only reason why companies would ever keep workers around for oversight, instead of just fully relying on automation and cutting costs that way, is because <coughs> of unions. I mean, the links unions have been contested throughout the yeah, day. Yeah, unions and their collective bargaining contested. are the only reason why companies oh, ensure that workers stay for oversight. Uh, cool. Can we have a question? Let's go to your argument about offshoring again. Yeah. So you tell me that there's gonna be a massive, what's the internal link to the war? Um, the Moser evidence is pretty good. It says that the trade war, Russia's invasion, and the risk of decoupling from China mean that the US needs to have its own supply chain, supply chains, a industrial base with resilience from shocks, China's ability to like, manipulate REM supplies, things like that, it means that our military is strong and that we can't be China's pawn. I'm just going to start at the top of our case, then I'll just address the weighing on both sides. I'll have speak their weighing, then their case. <coughs> All right. Time starts now. At the top of our case, they said they're over you. They say the states are already anti-union regardless, which is why right-to-work laws have no effect. But one, there are literally democratic states that have right-to-work laws, which is why, obviously, they're not the only reason why unions are decreasing. But second, they also concede our not response that their own evidence says that it stops unions from ever growing further. That is a link into our argument, because if we prove that workers are not able to join unions in the long term, even if there's an anti-union like states no matter what, that still means that workers are not able to gain access to the union and get their jobs saved from automation. That's still offense for us. Go to our argument. Automation on the link story is never contested. Our argument is that automation is increasing right now in the United States because companies want to replace jobs and cut costs. They considered both links for it. We say that overall, the unions ensure through collective bargaining that one, workers are notified beforehand that they're going to lose their job to automation, allowing them time to transition to another position. But secondly, they've also considered the evidence from uh, Quacking News that says that overall, the unions through collective bargaining ensure that workers still stay in the company for oversight, which is that automation, if it makes mistakes, can still be checked back on. All of that is conceded, which means our impact is very thing where we say that overall unions decreasing means that workers are not protected from automation that by 2040 threatens to, uh, 2040 threatens to steal 40 million jobs go to the response that they accept one response that you still need safety oversight but they've conceded our evidence that safety oversight is only allowed whenever unions ensure that workers stay in the first place otherwise companies wouldn't keep any workers around for oversight they would just go with automation and, uh, and uh, cut costs that way that is all conceded on the way they just say that uh, they are way on time because it takes until 2040 and that uh, the trade wars going to happen no matter what no our our argument is gradual. We say that millions of jobs are lost every single year from automation, that by 2040, that's the, all, that is the entire amount, which means that insofar as automation is continuing to wipe jobs, that is, again, uh, conceded from our speech, a link into their argument. If U.S. jobs are being wiped from automation, that means the liberal order is literally going down if their argument is relying on actual American workers to go into these jobs, go to their case. On their case, they lose the run of the minimum wage argument. They literally concede that China has less cost. They say there's better conditions in the US. What are these conditions? There's no qualification in the John Gates' speech. Literally nothing. At that point, if they want to prioritize cost, then they obviously they're going to they're going to stay in China if they're making way more money in that in that condition. Thus, road path. Path and I'll go from there. I'll just be clear. Okay. This ballot really isn't that hard. Their case relies on the assumption that right-to-work laws harm unions. They have conceded a straight turn to their case that right-to-work laws improve unions. They have dropped that unions currently have a monopoly on the workplace because of all the dues, and as a result, there is little incentive to improve practices. But in right-to-work states, workers can choose voluntary dues, which means unions have to prove their value and thus increase the value they provide to their customers. And for example, the people affected by automation, that strengthens unions, that turns their case. There is literally zero ink on this in Final Focus, and it turns their case. So easy to vote there. 
on the overview. Their first response is that democratic states have it. That was a new response. But more than that, just because they're democratic states doesn't mean they're anti-union. Our evidence says that first you have to elect politicians that are anti-union. They say unions can't grow further. But those policies would have existed regardless. The Whitaker evidence is fantastic in saying that right to work laws don't mean anything. They merely rebut preferences that we're going to implement policies regardless that were anti-union. So the benefits of the app are very minimal and correlative, not causal. At that point, the link into their case is at very least mitigated. On the way, they say that if there are elimination of US jobs, we can't access their impact. Absent this way, they can't win because they didn't extend an impact. They broadly said automation is good. But this isn't true. So long as the US has automated, like even if it's automated, as long as the US isn't reliant on China, that still protects the global economy. That's the entirety of our link chain. We don't need to have workers, we just need to have depend we just need to eliminate dependence. On our case, um, the argument is fairly simple. Right to work laws lead to reshoring where companies go back to the US because they see the conditions as more favorable to business, and that's key to reducing re reliance on China's supply chains where they can ma manipulate them, and lower growth as a product of that culminates in war as China's able to man manipulate us, and to do a crescendo, the, uh, that part of the argument is conceded, it leads to nuclear war and extinction. At that point, their only response is like the minimum wage workers thing. Again, we have competing arguments. We say there are favorable business conditions in the US, and they say that there's minimum wage workers in China, but still, 69% of companies after right to work laws came to the US. Maybe some stay in China, but at least some go to the US. At that point, as long as we win a risk of our argument, we win the round because they conceded our argument is existential, i.e. that it's the collapse of human civilization, which outweighs, but also our argument affects the entirety of the global economy and outweighs in scope. They're only protecting against automation in the US, but like really, the case turn is the easiest place to vote. Right. Thank you.